We're continuing our coverage of the Texas Federation of Republican Women State Convention here in San Antonio, Texas. Today we have with us Ryan Sinton, who is running for the uh, Railroad Commission in Texas. That's right. Uh, replacing the seat being given up by Barry Smitherman as he moves on to Attorney General. Correct. Thanks for having me. Thank you, and welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Glad to be here. Ryan, tell us a little bit about your background and, and, uh, and why you got into the race for Railroad Commission. Sure. Well, uh, grew up in, in Texas, fifth generation Texan, and uh, grew up in the Dallas area. Uh, had three siblings there, parents are both teachers, and mm -hmm. uh, grew up and then went to uh, Texas A&M, put myself through school there, very proud of that. Got my mechanical engineering degree, and more importantly, I met my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got married shortly after school, been married about 15 years now, we have three kids. We moved down to the Houston area, and uh, right after school went into the oil business, and I've been there ever since. Uh, started off with some of the majors, Oxy and then Marathon, mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually in 06, my wife and I started our own engineering firm. Uh, it's called Pinnacle, mm -hmm. and we do oil and gas engineering across the state, frac frankly across the country and, and the world. We've got people doing integrity analysis, equipment analysis in the Middle East, in Australia, South America, uh, Canada, all over the United States, as I said, California, Florida, all, all over the place, and uh, have about 300 people. We've been very blessed, and uh, it's amazing when you look at how strong our energy industry is, and particularly when you go overseas and you see how strong the United States technology and our capabilities and approach to energy production mm -hmm. just simply out, outshines everybody else in the world. So when it comes to the Railroad Commission, and you look at the potential we have in front of us to do great things in energy, you know, not just in our production, but in our export and our economic policies, to be an elected official with a business background and a technical background all in oil and gas, I, I think I can make a real big impact in how we do things and, and really help benefit all the citizens of Texas and frankly the United States by making sure that we continue to be energy leaders. You know, the news media doesn't want to really tout this information because it doesn't fit their storyline. But energy in the United States has been rapidly but quietly growing as, as a powerful industry. We re recently passed Russia and Iraq in terms of our production of oil and natural gas. Right. And uh, I think, are we becoming set up to um, become an exporter of natural gas at this point? We should be. I mean, today we export very little natural gas, but you're exactly right. When you look around the world, the prices that our citizens pay for gas and for refined products is a third or a fourth what people are paying overseas. And that's great, that's helped drive our economy. But if you think about it, imagine the prowess that our state and our nation would have if we began to play on that, economic, on that type of economic scale. If we continued to in increase our production to the point that we were able to not only match our needs inside the country, but now we're able to compete with Russia and with, with South America and other places in terms of their energy exports, mm -hmm. uh, it would change, it'd be a game changer. And it pushed the United States back to a real position of energy prominence. Now, one of the really big things standing in the way of that is the President of the United States, Barack Absolutely. Obama. The man that should be responsible for growing the economy of this country right. is actually getting in the way. How, is, as a railroad commissioner, would you work to fight against what the Obama administration is doing and keep Texas energy production moving forward. Sure. Well, that's, it's good, and it kind of comes in two parts. The first is good interstate regulation that is not only founded in good science and good engineering techniques, which most of what we do today is, mm -hmm. but it's also saying what we're doing is is leading the nation in terms of good technical principles and good approaches. So for example, if we had a, a, a new standard or new regulation put out by the Railroad Commission to regulate, as we just did, well bore integrity. Mm -hmm. Well, as we, if, if for some reason the EPA or DOT or FEMSA wants to come in and say, well, we think you should have a different regulation, or we think we're going to apply these standards, as long as we can say we are technically at the forefront. And once again, being a technical expert, I pride myself on this, being able to argue and advocate for why what we're doing is leading, we, we can simply win that battle in the court system or in the, in the court of public opinion or inside the technical conversations where we, where we convince people that, look, what we're doing is right. I've done that as a, as a technical expert working on court cases and on behalf of our operators dealing with the EPA and FEMSA, arguing about what, our, what things we're doing here, why they are technically valid. And when we have good science on our background, we almost always win. So the second piece is export. And you have, so mm -hmm. first is make sure our regulations are leading the nation and that we're able to advocate for those and explain them. The second piece is making sure that we have laid out a vision for how our energy industry will not only put our, our economy in the state of Texas in a strong position, but put the entire nation back on the right track. And if we 
outline that policy, outline that vision, and we continually hit on it. We talk about it, kind of, we beat that drum. We talk, look, we can not do this or we can do this. And if we do this, look at how it's gonna benefit our state and our nation, and not just our citizens here, but give us geopolitical strength around the globe. And if we continually talk about that, that message will get out there. As the citizens of the United States will look at this, they're gonna say, man, that's the way to do it. This other stuff is just plain stupid, not to go down that road, not to leverage our capabilities and our resources. To, to take our place that it should be as a national, as a global energy leader is just not the right path. So we've just got to continue to advocate for that. Now, the current railroad commissioner, <clears throat> the, the seat that you're running for, mm -hmm. is held by a Houstonian. Yes, sir. Houston being the energy capital of Energy capital of the world. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. Why is it important that we make sure we have a representative from Houston on the railroad commission? Well, I will say this. I think it's most important that we have a representative on the railroad commission who genuinely understands the business. Now. Where that person comes from is important, but more important is that they have that knowledge. Have they been in the industry 15 years? Have they run a business in the industry? Do they do business with our producers, whether they are independents or majors on a consistent basis, so that they understand what principles are important, what policies are important, and what challenges we're facing? That's mm -hmm. most important. Now, obviously being from Houston, that gives me a, a great perspective on that because this is what we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, even people who are in Houston say, well, I'm not really in the oil business, I'm in the car business. Who do you think you're selling those cars to? <laughs> Everybody in Houston's in the oil business. We're in the energy business. Yeah. So to make sure that, that, that we have someone in there who has that kind of day-to-day -day interaction, has that exposure, I mean, whether they're from Houston, they're from Midland, or other places where we do, where we have great energy businesses that are thriving in that economy, I think is, is going to be crucial for us. And I have, I'm doing that right now. Houston's one of the few places where the high gasoline prices is a sign of a good economy. <laughs> you know, I should, I, because it, but yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's probably a hand, there's a lot of people in Houston that go to the pump and say, man, I wish this was a little more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Texas energy business brings a lot of revenue to the state of Texas, but with that, there's, a, there is a little Let bit me of a downside. You. Texas energy business brings a lot of revenue to the entire country. Yeah, absolutely. But go ahead. There is a, a slight downside to, to the energy industry in Texas, and that's the wear and tear on our roads and infrastructure sure. in the state. Uh, a lot of water requirements with all the fracking, mm -hmm. the uh, wear and tear on these county roads is really, really tough with all mm -hmm. this heavy equipment that's coming in there. How can we work with the energy industry to make sure that, along with the, the good side of it, that we're also taking care of, of the damage and, and the needs of the industry? industry in terms of water. Sure. Well, in fact, let's look a little bit broader. Anytime you have a growing economy, we have lots of citizens across the country and, and across the world trying to come to Texas, right? They know what we're doing mm -hmm. is providing jobs and providing opportunity around the country, around, around the state, to all of our citizens. And so when you look at not just roads, but you look at education, you look at, um, you look at basic infrastructure aside from roads and water, all of those pieces, we have to look at and say, okay, do we have the infrastructure and the systems in place to support that growing economy? And oil and gas is certainly going to be a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. So what we always have to do is look forward down, down the road and say, where is our economy going? What fuels that? And do we have the pieces in place to, to supply the, the things that are needed? So when you look at roads and you look at water, we're going to need a long-term infrastructure plan. And this is uh, by the way, this is independent of the oil and gas business. Mm -hmm. When you just look at the growth of citizens yep. and the requirements for them for roads and for water, but then mm -hmm. add oil and gas into it, we got to have a good plan. The use of water, and we talk about this a lot, and I don't know if people know the, the, the relative impact, the use of water in the oil and gas business is a very small percentage of total water use across the state. Mm -hmm. the, the numbers of citizens moving in is a greater impact than the oil and gas business. So we, do, we need that plan for, okay, what infrastructure do we put in? How do we fund it from, from, in, from revenues coming, coming in from the state already? How is it funded from industry? Where are, where are industry costs in areas like Eagleford Shale or like Midland where, in, where industry needs are really driving the, te the infrastructure requirements? Mm -hmm. Then, okay, how does industry contribute to that? We need a good plan for that infrastructure development, and then we have to strike that balance individually around the state in different cities and counties to make sure that we've got the right balance for, for funding those economic developments. But we'll have to look long term. I'm talking five, ten years out to make sure we've got the right plan in place. Well, Ryan, I want to. I know you've got a busy schedule with the convention going on here today. I want to invite you to come back to Texas GOP vote in the future and, and drill down into some more specific issues and talk about some of those things. And uh, thank you for your willingness to serve the people of the state of Texas. Well, I'd love to do it, Bob. I'll be very proud to have an impact in making sure that our state is doing the right things. And I thank you for everything you do and help get the message out about how important, not just this race, but, but all, 
all races are when it comes to our economy and, and certainly energy, which is, a, which is the central piece of our economy in Texas. So thank you for all you do. All right. Thank you very much. Look That's forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Bob.